It's not that I'm against marriage, it's just that I'm for logic, you know? <laughs> it's, uh, well, the divorce rate right now is 54%, okay? 54%. It's a big number, really. Intimidating number. I'm a little spooked about it. Let me put it in a different context for you so we can take love and romance out of the equation and uh, think clearly for a second. <laughs> Imagine if you were standing on the sidewalk watching people try to cross the street and 54% of them didn't make it. <laughs> How excited would you be for your turn? Really? <laughs> really? I think you'd see a lot more. No, no, no. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Yeah. No, there's a system here for sure. We haven't found it. Go ahead. Yeah. What? Yeah, I'll be lonely. I'll be up half a house. That's fine. That's, that's, that's a lot of rooms to cry in. <laughs> so, and dating's tricky. You know, that's the alternative, of course, is dating. And it scares me. Dating's the number one cause of marriage. So. I'm getting older, which means by default, uh, girls are getting younger. And uh, I, can't, I can't date young girls. I can't. They're, they're full of hope. I'm getting, I'm getting so tired of putting that out. It's hard on my heart to watch the light fade out of somebody's eyes. It really, it's so tiring. Look, young girls still think Mr. Wright might be out there, and, and maybe I'm him. <laughs> oh, that is rich. I date older women because they know better. Uh, they, al they already met Mr. Wright, and he turned out to be a prick. So, they're, uh, yeah. they're usually willing to give Mr. Considerate a second chance, you know? Heck, with older women, even Mr. Prompt becomes sexy, you know? Not much of a looker, but he's always on time. I really, I really admire that. I do. And he's got nice penmanship, which I'm not used to, but it shows respect for others. Relationships are really hard uh, if you care <laughs> about the other person. If you don't care, they're easy, really. But if, if you care, oh my goodness, you, you have to make these choices you would never make ever if you weren't in the relationship. For example, you have to join team sleep. You have to join team sleep. You have to sleep together in a relationship as much as possible. There's no point in being well rested if your partner isn't, really. You don't want to be fresh for the crap you're gonna take all morning. There's no, there's no benefit for that. So, so you gotta join team sleep. You know, you're just sitting on the couch one night and say, well, time for bed, is it? <laughs> Great. Hate finding out how movies end. So now, now you gotta go to bed, and because you've agreed to go to bed, you got a spoon. Now I'm a, I'm a spooner. Everyone know what spooning is? Spooning's what, yeah? Okay, that's when the two of you lie on your side in a lover's embrace. You know, you're just holding each other. <laughs> just look like a couple spoons in the drawer. Hush, <laughs> Hmm, quit squirming. <laughs> Knock it off, seriously. <laughs> Pick a spot, what is with you? I always end up laying in this god-awful cramped position, just, oh no, did it to myself again. There's no way I'm gonna be able to fall asleep like this at all. If I move again, she's gonna yell at me for sure. What's better for me long term? I wish I could just die. If I could just die right now. Get some sleep. Spooning's so hard. My whole goal whenever I'm spooning is to just hold her long enough till she gets too hot. That's my goal. Every, I know if I can stay in there, if I can cook her up, you know? I can get in there and cook her up, then eventually, okay, too hot, too hot, get off. And, yeah. I know. That's the goal every night. Because then I get to go to sleep and I'm a romantic hero. I held you longer than you could be held, baby. And it's hard. I have to be in the back. That's the other tricky thing. I'm a relatively big guy, and traditionally I date girls who are smaller than me. So it's, 
It's creepy when I'm in the front. It gives me the heebie-jeebies, you know? It really does. No, because I'm just laying there all set to drift off, and then this little pygmy hand comes crawling over my head. Get up! I got hot breath shooting down my, get the hell! I feel like I'm backpacking a hobbit up Everest, you know? And you can't deal with that because you're too busy blowing hair out of every orifice in your face <laughs> without being allowed to use your arms. So you just got to... <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> right about then, those three days growth unshaved sandpaper calves come raking up the shin. <laughs> it's like getting grazed by a great white in the ocean, okay? That's what I do. <laughs> strip of flesh comes right out of the meaty part. Uncut toenail, slice opens your Achilles. I don't even know, because they're icicle feet. These icicle feet. Why do you have no blood in your feet when you go to bed? What is wrong with you that all the blood takes off out of your body as soon as you lay down, races up out of your feet, into your brains, so you can nag at me first thing in the morning. I'm oblivious to the bloody stumps I got dangling as I lay there. Just, <laughs> just quit squirming! Quit squirming! <laughs> 54%, huh? <laughs> Go figure. Thanks very much, Montreal. <laughs>